Hello everybody, um, greetings of the day and uh, welcome to my channel Technical Tips with Hassan and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining me back and uh, I hope you have enjoyed my previous video which was uh, you know on the on the storage management and I hope you have learned a lot if you have any questions you can leave the comment there and uh, you know I'll, I'll try to reply and uh, please point out if you think that there is something wrong or if you think that there is some errors so uh, I, I am happy to you know uh, improve myself as well as if you have any question I can answer that as well so um, once again thank you very much I've seen quite a lot of subscribers as well and I um, saw that I've got, I'm getting you know a lot of views uh, from different part of words so thank you very much for supporting me and uh, thank you <coughs> for for watching this video so uh, you know uh, let's move to our agenda what's our agenda is so basically today uh, the agenda we have is uh, purely based on the networking concepts and uh, and uh, some of the tools and uh, protocols which we use in the networking uh, it, it, it will not cover the uh, the you know the all agenda of the networking but it'll give you a basic knowledge and I will cover more uh, topics of the networking as well so stay tuned I just don't want to you know uh, make this video you know more um, uh, for example a lot bigger so that's why uh, I am thinking that I should uh, I should uh, uh, you know cover at least the core concepts so the agenda we have today is the of course the basic networking concepts and some network related important files which are on the on the uh, uh, on the Linux uh, operating system which you should know of and you should know that how to manipulate them uh, in time when you need it and the sec and the third one is just some basic networking commands and tools which you should really know and uh, which you should really uh, you know get your hands on to and the next one is the FTP file transfer protocol uh, no doubt that it is a very important uh, command and uh, sorry a very important protocol you know transfer to transfer the data and then we have SCP and our sync well one by one I will you know deep dive into each topic and uh, you know we'll, we'll work on it so the first uh, slide which we have is the basic networking concepts uh, okay and uh, what are the basic networking concepts are here okay now uh, look as a system administrator uh, i i would say that you you know you should really uh, know about the the um some of the concepts of the networking okay otherwise it's 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 not the job of this i mean system administrator uh, of course you if you want to learn more networking you you know deep dive into some networking engineering courses or something like that but uh, you know i'll just give you the uh, a, a little bit in introduction to the network concepts which you should really you know uh, know and uh, which you should really uh, Take care of so for example ip address is very basic since it, it, it called internet protocol address you know uh, it says you know 32 bits uh, um, uh, 32 bits uh, ip address which uh, you know we usually uh, use to communicate over the internet okay and uh, it's very easy one actually there are a lot of tutorials online i'm not gonna deep dive into this so just uh, to let you know that uh, so that you uh, you know understand this um, uh, from your point of view okay and uh, I would suggest you uh, suggest all of you that you should really um, uh, learn about the networking concepts because as a sysadmin you know you usually have to perform the duties and you know troubleshoot the networking issue so uh, you should really take care of yourself subnet masks okay so it's like uh, kind of you can say the sub network you know or a subnet you know it's a logical uh, subdivision of an ip network as you know that we are running out of the the ip addresses um uh, ipv4 ip addresses so uh, you know uh, to overcome that problem we we have that subnetting so that we don't want to waste our ips so subnetting concepts is very important please uh, there are a lot of tutorials on youtube and i'll try to find some nice one and i'll send it on to you and i'll leave it in the description so that you can uh, you can have a look 
gateway of course as its name gateway is the is the uh, is the place or is the route or is the is the um, is the doorway from where you communicate with internet and communicate with uh, f from your environment to the world so that's gateway dhcp um, it's the uh, uh, so dhcp usually gives us or assign us the ip so usually when we uh, I'll, when i deep dive into the networking uh, sorry in the in the linux networking i'll show you how we configure our network interface cards and how we can set up the dhcp as static or automatic you know so dhcp server basically assign the network so whenever you uh, for example i give you a very simple example in our home wi-fi okay so when you you know connect to the wi-fi you know the uh dhcp server okay which is managed by of course our modem uh usually see that okay this device now it's entered in our network it's connected to our wi-fi it will assign an ip address to you to your device and uh you know so that it will be you know different from the other device connected to the ne network so that's what dhcp do it do, do dns so dns is the um domain name service okay uh dns basically so if I give you a very simple example, for example, you have your phones, okay, and you save the number there, okay. So if I say you that, uh, uh, okay, you want to call your, for example, your a relative or your friend, uh, I will, you know, you will. What you will do is you will search for the name. You will not memorize the number of all of your contacts, okay. You will know their names. So it's the same, you know, DNS actually. Uh, you know it uh, resolve the name to the ip address and uh, ip address to name so that's what dns is uh, interfaces of course this is the network interfaces uh, which is sometimes connected to the servers uh, the networks um, it has its own mac address as well this is a device actually and uh, we communicate with other devices or with other networks or with other um, or with the internet through these interfaces NAT, NAT is a very important one, it's a network address translation, okay, and uh, it's kind of, you can say, the method of uh, mapping an IP address space, uh, you know, into another, uh, in, into another, uh, by modifying the network address information in the IP header, okay, and uh, so that's the network address translation, uh, network address translation is, so basically you can say that, uh, uh, in simple words you get a translation of the private ips to a public ip you know um, it, 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 it do that as well so that's the basic concepts i'm not gonna deep dive into it i would suggest you to you know uh, learn more about it and uh, uh, as a system administrator you should be should be good good in in, in networking we'll go to the next uh slide which is the uh it says as a uh, network related files on the on the uh, on the uh, system so we will do the practicals here as well so the first file we have is here guys that's uh, the Etsy host okay so now before I go to the practical um, ex uh, practical lab I want to ask you that you should have a bash terminal or a putty software okay you should have a virtual box set up uh, so that you, um, you you know you can deploy a virtual machine on it and you know play with it and uh, these two things you should have it if you don't know how to set up the center uh, the virtual box and uh, virtual machine please watch my uh, video of lab setup and you will understand how we'll do uh, how how we can do it okay so we're going to connect to this sorry we're going to um, connect to this uh, virtual machine now and uh, we are here okay so the first file which we have is the um, it's the etsy you know host name okay so what's uh, uh, etsy host name is we'll go and we will print the content of etsy host name okay so you can see that the host name is localhost dot local domain. Okay, so uh, usually it's not the same. This is a typical uh, name which we will get by default. So what I'll do is I'll go into it and I will um, change it. Okay, usually you know we have for example, for example if we have a web server. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll give it a name. So 
uh, so there how would we know that what's the name of the server so we will give the host name here so what we'll do is we'll change the name so we'll say for example um, server one yeah let's let's give a name as server one okay and uh, I will uh, uh, save this just to verify the content again you can see this now the problem is that you will not be able to find this name as yet so what you will do you will reboot the virtual machine here and when you will reboot it after the reboot you will see that it will take an effect and it will show that yes uh, this uh, this um, name has been set up there so it's the host name is very important okay usually all the all the all the servers you know they, they have the host names there so we'll connect back now and uh, see if our virtual machine is there already so it's booting up while it's booting up uh, we can check the other files as well so the uh, the next file is we uh, we have so we just want to show you before yeah you see that it's rebooted now okay and uh, now you can see that we have the the name changed here it's not the now local host it's the server one okay the next one is the etsy config network so we'll go into system etsy uh, sorry what is it exactly sysconfig yeah sorry sysconfig uh, config and then the lscd okay so network so we have cat network yes so this is the um cat network actually it's just it's not this okay let give, give me a second we'll go to the network yeah so here we are okay just want to show you where i am here so at CCS config network uh descripts okay ls hyphen l and you can see that all the interfaces we have the commands uh, for that and uh, here we are so the basically our interface is this one okay you can copy the name and we can have a look what it is if i say cat okay so just close the screen and i just want to remove this one we'll discuss this one later and uh, here okay okay if i say cat here if we want figure you can see the the type is ethernet proxy method is equal to none and uh, you can see all the attributes here and how these things are working so you can see also the uh, the usual ID as well here okay and uh, what I want to show you here actually if I can see that oh yeah I think it's, it doesn't have it here oh yeah we do have it so see that DHCP is managing uh, the the IP addressing here so this is you know something which uh, 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 this is the bridge adopter configuration okay bridge adopter configuration is so uh, bridge adopter enables you on the on the on the virtual machine bridge adopter enables you to connect to the internet so if you think that you cannot access to your virtual machine or you cannot uh, you cannot uh, connect to the uh, uh, internet then there is a surely problem is you, with your network adopter so change that type to the bridge adopter and then you'll be able to connect to your uh, internet so this is uh, what uh, uh, it is okay and so you know specify the ip address say um, subnet mask or default gateway here so this is what it is next one uh, we have the etsy and switch.com so if we quickly go cat Etsy and switch.conf we get this so basically you know it tells the system you know where to uh, resolve the uh, where to resolve the uh, host name to its IP address you know you can see that for example here you can see the host uh, host uh, uh, file here you can see the files then it DNS and then my host name basically it tells the uh, tells the system you know where to resolve the host name to its IP address so, the next one which we have is the etsy resolve.conf it's a very important file okay etsy resolve.conf actually what it do is that it um, it uh, it's the DNS okay it's the DNS which uh, if you have a problem with the DNS okay surely you should go there first thing and you should check what exactly the DNS here so if we get to this okay so we have you can see that name servers we have added so this is my local network 
okay you can see this here this is my local network uh, and uh, this is the gateway of my local network okay and um, uh, it's also acting you know it's acting as the dns of uh, of this virtual machine so it is all the host name so for example if i say uh, ping i will cover what is ping command okay but if you, if we say ping google.com so you see that it's pinging the google.com just want to close this you see this IP address here okay see that we just enter the name and it's resolving uh, that it's a it's a it's a Google IP address. so if you copy this for example and come back here and uh, if you put it here you may go to google.com you see that <coughs> you are in the google.com here so that's basically the the um, the the uh, purpose of the resolve.com file as well okay now the next slide if we move to the next slide next slide is some basic uh, networking commands and tools which we should uh, really look out, look at look at it so the first thing is the if config okay if config command is very important and uh, all of the system administrators should know this so if config command will show you the the um, uh, you know the uh, information about the about the IP addressing okay and uh, it also show you the the uh, interfaces as well as if you can see so for example this is our bridge adapter uh, interface we have this IP address we have this net mask we have this broadcast ID here okay and uh, then we have the uh, loopback uh, interface as well and uh, next one is the virtual broadcast interface so basically if config command gives you the information about the uh, you know NICs, the network interface cards and the ip addressing so that's that's what the if config do the ping command so ping command is very important and i just want to tell you that in yesterday meeting uh, uh, yesterday sorry video i have uh, pasted a, a very useful link a youtube video link in my description to follow and please check that out and you will understand more about the ping command and how it works okay so basically what ping command do is that if i say ping so ping uh, for example i say www.yahoo.com so you see that it's pinging yahoo.com okay so what ping do is ping send the uh, traffic okay icmp traffic okay to check if we can connect to this uh, 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 wife uh, sorry connect to that server or virtual machine it basically check the the connectivity it basically check the white listing of the of your network over the other network okay and uh, it check the the connectivity in between two networks and uh, it also check if 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 your server is alive or not so basically to troubleshoot the networking issues usually we use the ping command to check if we cannot connect to other network what's the reason behind it can we ping it if we can ping it then uh, you know there could be other problems so basically the first thing which we check is the ping command in terms of the uh, the connectivity next one is uh, if up and if down that's uh, that's the commands which we use to you know uh, we, we can uh, you know turn off the or shut down the the uh, interface cards okay and we can then turn back on as well so i will give you then example so if i say if config here you can see that this is our public interface uh, bridge adapter through which we are connected to this vm if i want to say if down to this uh, this um, network interface card you will see that i will certainly lose the the uh, ssh connectivity to the server from the terminal and then i have to go from the virtual machine and you know make this up so for example if i did this so you can see that now i just lost my um lost my uh connectivity to this and if i go back and if i uh, you know log into this again i will not be able to log in because that internet connection is gone because i turn off this uh, this interface card to to get this back <coughs> sorry to get this back on track i have to go into the virtual machine and i have to uh, turn it on from there so you can see that it's still down and uh, now 
when I will once I will be logged into my virtual machine you will see that how I will do it and how I will use the if up command to uh, to to get my my cursor back so system tools terminals so if we go there here we are just to let you know how we do so and to just to log into the root user so we are in the root user now we say if if up and then e and so what's the name of the interface so e and p 0 s 3 so e and p 0 s 3 so if we say if up so connection is activated successfully and now if we log into the uh, virtual machine you can see that we we, we can log in there so that's uh, that's uh, these two commands um, you know uh, functions netstat is also the very nice command uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the um, network networking so for example if you say the netstat it will tell you on what port what services are uh, are uh, are listening and uh, you will see here you can see that for example we are connected through the ssh okay just give it a second okay i'll clear this quickly uh t and l so, okay so you can see this here so uh we for example you can see that ssh is active there on and listening on port 22 okay and we are connected through it and uh, then there are others um for example dns uh, services also active there and the other uh, other services as well so you can uh, look at it and you know i want to suggest you one thing here that uh, please memorize the common ports number okay so for example for ssh we use 22 for dns is 53 for uh, ftp we use to, uh, port number 21 uh, for example port 80 for web server port 443 for secure uh, connection or for ssl and uh, you know these kind of the common port numbers you know you should know as a system administrator that uh, what ports we use for the for the common operations okay the next one which we have is the tcp dump tcp dump is very important command in terms of the troubleshooting the network connectivity okay so for example if i say uh, tcp do we have the TCP yes we have the TCP usually you know we don't have it and then we have to install it so to install it you install a TCP dump and it will install on your CentOS or Red Hat virtual machine and uh, here I what I'll do is I'll I'll filter this um, this interface to check what traffics are coming what traffics are going so you can see there's a lot of um, connections for example I give you the quick one uh, yeah so for example you see that we are connected as a, as a uh, f from the SSH so you can see that how it it's uh, it's uh, it's working on it and how the traffics are coming and going out so you know you can see that there are a lot of plenty of options uh, you know on the TCP dump which you can uh, use and uh, which you can really um, uh, you know work around uh, it's it's a very important command in terms of the in terms of the network so usually you know as a system administrator when we uh, when we um, troubleshoot the network related issues or sometime to be very honest we also deal that uh, what kind of traffic is coming and in and going out so for that you know we really use these types of tools so that we can check that if there is any suspicious uh, traffic there or if there is anything which uh, you know which we should really uh, take care of because as a system administrator to be very honest you uh, you are not only uh, you know looking after your um, uh, infrastructure okay but you also are looking after about the security as well okay so that the security is very very important and uh, i have a plans you know to to uh, make some um, notes on the on the on the on this as well okay so that uh, we all um, we all can uh, get our hands on this. you know basic security is necessary for a system administrator basic security is very necessary so uh, TCP dump it's a uh, very important to get your hands on to this and uh, there are other uh, things as well other uh, software Wireshark as well and uh, one more command which I didn't uh, you know really 
note in this is the trace route as well okay uh, trace route uh, i'll cover that as well in this um, video and you will uh, understand that but trace route is also you know network related um, network related uh, command and uh, you should really uh, learn that one as well basically you know uh, as a system administrator usually you have to deal with a lot of things you have to deal with a lot of things anyways uh, just want to you know um, tell you a little more on the um, on the on the uh, TCP dump so there's for example TCP dump one more thing which I just uh, got in my mind now wife hyphen I and then you can say this so if you say this so you see that it just gives you the five uh, last readings which it took that what what's going on here you can make it more as well and uh, you can do it so there are other options as well so for example TCP dump hyphen D and you can see that it's uh, it lists all of the all of the uh, all of the in uh, uh, interfaces which we are using okay so you can check all the inter interfaces as well and uh, then uh, we also for example if we run okay just quickly tcp you know just uh, don't want to waste other things here and you can see that it's the infinite number of the packets which we can filter you can give it a number as well you can also do another thing as well here that you can uh, for example uh, you can let me put it you can just capture the tcp traffic as well on this so you can see that you are only watching the tcp traffic as well and also if you want to for example uh, filter the traffic from particular port you can do that as well it's a it's a uh, it's it's very actually nice so for example uh, as a web on the web server usually if you want to uh, if you want to uh, filter the traffic and if you want to check that if what traffic is there uh, what kind of traffic is coming so you can just check this so for example i am checking for ssh so you see that uh, how the ssh is working and i'll also tell you how we how these connection you know make a handshake as well you see that acknowledgement and um, uh, the, the, this is very important one I'll show you how they uh, you know do the handshake when they establish a connection okay uh, I think that's that's pretty much it from the DCP dump the next one which I uh, want to tell you the wget so wget means so oh, for example on the windows if we want to download something okay we can simply go to that link and we can download the things very easy but how we'll do it on the on the uh, linux operating system okay so wget command is usually is is uh, is for the downloading on on uh, on the linux operating system you can do a man on it and you can you know check a lot of uh, uh, options which we have here but uh, what I'll do is I'll do a quick uh, demo I want to give you so for example if you come here and uh, for example if you say um, see TOS and OS download okay and uh, if you want to download here and I go to 86 byte and I go there so I'm not gonna for example download the full 10 gigs of ISO image I just take this file for example manifest Okay, I'll copy uh, I'll copy the link sorry copy link link address and what I'll do is I'll press W get and I enter this and you see this this will uh, download the the uh, file on the uh, from this location so just quickly want to check if that is right should be right and uh, 635 manifest yeah just want to go back and check something else maybe there's here we have as well the manifest which we can copy the address just want to check so it connected just checking why it's not so I open another terminal to connect this and w get okay so you see that this is working here I'll do is I exit from here and I'll show you here okay so just clear this I don't know there was a problem with that link or something I get this link so you see that it downloaded so if you say LS so you can see that we have this manifest manifest downloaded here already okay so this is uh, why we use the wget command 
The next one we have the curl. Curl is a very important command and um, it's actually C U R L command. So curl command. So basically, you know, when we are um, when we are uh, troubleshooting a website, okay. So for example, on Linux command line, we don't have anything for that. curl. For example, say www dot google dot com. Okay, so it'll either give you the HTML uh, source uh, codes and these kind of things, and you know other. But the one thing which it will tell you here that the site is up. Okay, if we are getting the the um, if we are getting the uh, a response back from them, so you can do a man on it and you can check. There are a lot of uh, options as well. One option which we have and we mostly as a system administrator use is the so, uh, sorry use is the c u r l hyphen i sorry hyphen i and the www dot g o l g dot com okay so what it basically do it will get the http header of this um, if of this url okay so if you do this you can see that we are getting 200 code okay that site is okay okay we can see the data as well when we did it and um, we also can do is if usually what we do is we check the time response time as well so you can see usually the websites are slow okay websites are slow and uh, they usually uh, don't reply or they are not caching they could be multiple reasons that they are a load on the web server as well so usually we use this command as well to check the time that how much time it took to response as well okay uh, for example i can show you for example if i go back to this website here so i inspect to this website for example here and if i go to the network <coughs> sorry go to the network and if i refresh this page again you will see that i'm getting the same thing okay i am getting the 200 uh, code as well and if i want to check the 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 timing here you can see that how much time it took to uh, set up the initial connection the first of all you see that waiting ttfb it's time to first byte okay um, first byte of data and 56.80 eight milliseconds which it took for this ttfb and then initial connection is established and then dns well this is these are the process you know usually take milliseconds to establish and we can check the the speed of the website through this okay so uh that's that's the the curl command is very very um, important command and you should really get your hands on to this you know try to do the different options on this and uh you will definitely uh, learn a lot from this and the, it, it it's it's the best command you know usually we, we troubleshoot the things okay next one uh this command nmtui it's actually if you say that it stands for the network manager text user interface okay now even on the terminals okay i mean i know when we log on to the server we have the graphical user interface itself and uh, we can change a lot of things even on the terminal as well it can gives you a, you know a text user interface so that you can manipulate and you can uh, you know uh, understand your network settings and you can implement the changes as well so for example uh, you know this tool you know can be run within the terminal of uh, you know and uh, you know allow changes you know and um, we can also implement the changes as well so without delaying this uh, delaying end time so this is the command so if we say for example this you say that we are now in the different uh, uh, window so for example we can edit the connection here you can see that we have uh, our two interfaces here so if this is our uh, public interface we can ch ch you know change the name this is the mac address of the uh, mac address of the the device this is the ipv4 uh, ipv4 connection if i say show here you can check the the ip4 configuration is automatic that dhcp automatic dhcp is assigning the ip addresses we can change this to the manual we can give it the address we can you know set up our own settings i'm not going to do it here because otherwise i will lose the connection to the uh, server but uh, this is what we can do here <coughs> uh, we can also delete the the uh, interfaces as well activate the connection set system host name for example you see that we have the host name server one we can change it from here and uh, it will be it will be uh, it will be changed on the system as well so 
this is a very important command as well and if you really want a quick look on your system configuration you can check this sorry i'm actually not feeling well today so <clears throat> if if you feel a little turbulence in it sorry for that in advance the next one is very important one and uh, for that i need two virtual machines okay now guys i already have one virtual machine here uh, which you can see it's running and uh, i have another laptop here with me and i have one more virtual machine is installed on that so i am going to use that virtual machine and this virtual machine now uh, clearly you can see the ip addressing okay if uh, so i'm going to connect to that virtual machine um okay i'll open up the new terminal um, i'm sorry i actually opened up the window so i'll open the new new window and uh, my terminal here we are so what i'm gonna do is that i'm going to use them here and uh this one and I'll copy this here sorry and we are here okay now you know that we have already connected to this we have another server okay sorry there is something wrong with my terminal give me a second I'll open something else so I'll open the new window is uh, we'll open this okay and you can check this here okay now you can see that <coughs> Uh, the IP address here is if config you can see that the IP address is this 192.168.0.188 okay the the other virtual machine IP address is 192.168.0.164 okay this is the IP address we have here and uh, you can see that we have the MOTD message of the day which I uh, which I uh, to, uh, taught you yesterday so you can see that this is the web server 2 and this is the server 1 so we have two virtual machines here okay and uh, if you install uh, the virtual if you have two laptops okay you can connect from one laptop terminal to other if you are on the same uh, Wi-Fi connection you can connect from the terminal of one laptop to the virtual machine which is deployed on the other virtual box on the other laptop so if you can do it that's what i did as well i don't want to put the load on this laptop so what i did is i installed the other virtual machine to the other laptop so basically i need the the virtual machine uh, command line here which i have already so we have two servers here you can see that and now we'll move forward and we will check what is the ftp the next topic we have okay so the next topic guys we have the ftp which stands for the file transfer protocol Okay, and uh, file transfer protocol is the process that involves the uh, transfer of the files between VMs and servers over the network. And in this protocol, traffic has to be allowed from both devices to send, uh, both devices network, I would say, to send or receive files over the internet. So, and uh, FTP protocol, it listens on port 21. Okay, so that's the uh, file transfer protocol. So basically, you know, the file transfer protocol, protocol you know, it's a, it's a standard network protocol actually. And uh, you know it's used for the transfer of the computer files between a client and the server on the computer network and um, it basically this protocol you know it's built on the client and server model okay so uh, that's uh, we used to you know uh, move around the data from one system to other system this is a very important one and we need to we need to uh, we need to understand this and we need to check this so basically what will happen is if this is the server okay and I want to uh, you know server one and server two okay so what I will do is I will uh, make server one as server and server two as client here you know and then client will transfer the file to the server okay and uh, you will see how I will move the transfer uh, move the files okay so to to do that I'll quickly to tell you the package we need on the server is the VS uh, FTPD and uh, on the on the client side we need FTP okay these two packages which we need uh, which we need to um, 
install on both of these systems okay so let's go to the uh, to the uh, virtual machines and i'll show you how i'll do it so first of all i'm going to configure the server one and uh, i'll check first rpm hyphen qa if we have this software already ftp we don't have it or vs well it's a vs ftp no we don't have so what we have to do is we have to install yum install uh, vs ftp d hyphen y okay so now we'll install it and you'll see that it's installing the now the package is installed there you can check this now what we have to do is we have to change the configuration okay we have to go to vsf vsftpd and then again vsftpd.com and then here we have to check the uh, we have to implement different settings so s key setting first if you search and i told you already how we search the 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 text in the vi uh, editor so please uh, remember that and if you don't know how i'm uh, operating this please go back to my uh, videos and check that uh, how i am dealing with the vi editor how we can manipulate the text how we can search for it how we can uh, delete the text so this is so you can see that these two lines uh, if you see here these two lines are commented so you know s key upload uh, uh, enable and s key download enable but they are commented so they are not in the operation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncomment this okay and the second thing if i say if you press shift g and you will be at the end of the 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 uh, at the end of the uh at the end of the this file so what i'll do one more thing is the uh I will add the 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 local time as well here okay so if I say you so what I'll do is I'll say use underscore L O C A L T I M E local time and I'll set it to yes okay so use local time here okay and uh, one more thing is which I want to do is the I'm gonna say N O N N uh where is the cursor anonymous okay anonymous so if i say again anonymous not this one the next one anonymous user is enabled you see that so we can do it to know as well so that no other user can you know log into this okay <sighs> that's make it secure and our um, our system is now ready we want to check if this uh, this server service is installed status uh, so you see that all other this bunch of options when you press tab it gives you all option of the command so i was typing system ctls when i type system as uh, sis it gives that these can commands you can run so i run this command so v s f t pd we want to check the status if this service is running if this service is not running we cannot connect so you can see that this server service is inactive dead okay so we have to start this service so how we start the system ctl and uh, we say start vstb okay now we start this now we check the status again and you see that it's saying it's active and running and uh, we also want when we reboot the uh, virtual machine we want this uh, service to be active okay when you reboot the service usually the service is stopped okay so to do to keep them running we will say enable okay so vs ftpd <coughs> and it will enable this so now when you will reboot this virtual machine it will not uh, um, reboot the virtual machine on this next startup it will not uh, stop this service it will be keep on running okay now we have the the server is ready we want to get ready the client as well so what i'm gonna do is we need to install the as you can see that the next package this one is installed now we need to install the ftp so i'll install yum install or we can check as well first of all if we have there our rpm hyphen qa and check for the ftp if we have ftp here so we can see we don't have any ftp uh, uh package here so what i'm going to do is hello and on this you can see that uh yum in oh yeah sorry spelling instead 
spelling in so so you can see that now it's downloading the uh, package and the package is downloaded now what I'm going to do is that now what I have to <coughs> I have to do is I will um, I will do is that I will uh, say FTP enter this and you can see that we have the FTP we just say buy to get out of this uh, prompt what I'll do is that uh, I will go on this virtual machine and I will say if config and if you see this IP address and I want to connect to this okay what I will do here on this FTP and this IP address and when I press enter and okay so it's saying that no route to the host okay so you see that it's good actually it's good that we are getting these errors so that we know we understand that so what we will do is to troubleshoot this issue we will first um check if we can ping this so let's see if we can ping this okay so you can see that we can ping it fine it means it is connected then what could be the issue ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I think I know it should be, I think, yes, the firewall. I didn't see the firewall, if we have the firewall uh, enabled or not. So you see that uh, the firewall, the, ah, you see, the firewall is active, okay? And that's why this, uh, the, the, the virtual machine cannot connect to this. So what we have to do is that we have to, uh, what we have to do is that we need to, either add a rule that it allows the FTP connections okay and you can do that or you can stop it as it is not the production or you know any any critical virtual machine so what we can do is we can simply stop the firewall to to allow this but you can add the rule as well so what how I will stop this so a system CTL and I will say stop stop firewall T so I'm going to stop this. Now we can check the status. You see that the status is inactive. You can see that act inactive dead. And now we will uh, try to do it. So first I want to go to, for example, the user directory here, ZA and uh, Dex, or oh, sorry here, yes. You can see that there's nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file here. So if I say touch, for example, I'm going to create a zip file, okay? A simple zip file so I'll say for example uh, lfcs dash tutorial dot uh, for example I say zip okay I'm going to touch this file you can see that this file is created you can see as it's zip file that's what it's showing in the red okay now what I'm going to do is I'll do the same thing again I will uh, I will go back to this FTP and yes you can see that now i am connected you see that we did we had the problem with the firewall so h r a z a i'm going to use this user and password for this user now just to let you know this user is available on this vm that's why we are able to connect okay now you see that we uh, 230 login successful now we are there now what i will do is the first thing which i'll do i'll the binary mode on so you see that it switched to the binary mode and then I'll press hash so that whenever we uh, whenever we want to uh, transfer any data it gives that buffers to the in in the hashes okay and I'll show you what it is exactly so I'll put the so for example what's the name of the file you can see the file okay just to verify on this server we don't have this file here at the moment you can see that no file here but what I'll do is I'll put this file here. When I'll put this file here, you can see that entering passive mode 150 okay to send data. And uh, you see that it's uh, sent the data already. So transfer is complete. We check it here. And you see that LFCS tutorial is there. Okay. See that this file is here now and it's pre present here. So this is how you know we establish the, establish the, uh, the, um, FTP connections there and it's very important topic and uh, I hope you like this okay and uh, basically all the transfer protocols are, are based on this okay but we have modified a lot of things in our new connections which I'm going to tell you how we are modifying this okay now 
we go to our next slide so we can see that uh, I already covered the uh, FTP transfer protocol. Uh, next one is the SCP. SCP is also, I took this definition from the Wikipedia, uh, secure copy protocol. You know, secure copy protocol is means of securely transferring computer files between a local host and a remote host or between two remote hosts, you know, based on the secure shell protocol commonly it refers to both of the secure copy protocol and the program itself okay so basically what happened is the in the secure copy protocol or scp you know helps to transfer the computer files securely okay securely from a local to a remote host or uh, you know it's somewhat you can say similar to the ftp but you know it adds a security and authentication uh, layer of security and authentication you know and this protocol is sets of rules you know used by the computers to communicate uh, the default port for this it actually used as same as ssh uh, protocol uh, as 22 so it will use the 22 port as uh, ssh use it uh, 22 port as well and uh, that's what it is. so let's go and we'll we'll i'll show you practically how we will transfer the data okay so what I'm going to do is here, you can see that I'll just go back to the root. I'll go back here just to confirm here. We don't have anything here. Uh, I mean, we have this and uh, okay. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a file on this server. So you see LS, sorry, LS and we have this. So let's get rid of this. I guess. Okay, let's say ls and uh, we have the other one as well. Let's see, ls. Okay, we sorry, what I'm doing, and uh, yes, and now we don't have any file. Here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file, touch um, for example, scp file or any, any name. For example, I want to give for example, uh, lfcs dash technical tips with Hassan dot for example I say um, txt okay this file is created here okay I maybe put something as well in this uh, for example if I say ca vi um, sorry lf so we are in for example I just copy this and paste it there okay just just for the text here so I'm going to paste this one here I'll save this and now you can see that we have this file here and if we get to this you can see that it will give us the secure copy protocol uh, definition which we copy from our notes okay now what i want to do is i want to copy this file okay and i want to copy this file to this virtual machine here okay for that what i'm going to do is first i need the ip address of this virtual machine and you can see that the ip address is this okay and uh, i also should know the the name uh, of the user okay either i i should have my user and i should have the credentials of that user which is on the setup on this on this virtual machine i should know the ip address or the host name of this virtual machine i should know the user which is already set up there for me and i should know the credentials of that user okay so what i'm gonna do is uh, quickly that you can check there is nothing here okay I mean there is no file here uh, with the name of the lfcs.txt so this one uh, what I'm going to do is I want to transfer this to to the uh, to that folder through that uh, virtual machine so what I'll do is I'll type scp lfcs okay and uh, then what I'll do where as just copy lfcs file to where to this IP address and uh, sorry I just missed one thing root at IP at this IP address and then I'll press where where it want to go it won't go to the uh, if you see PWD root okay so I I'll go back and I'll just say root it's this one as well okay but so we want to transfer it where so understand this command again SCP securely copy LFCS file to the root to this host with this user and what's the location where we want to copy this this is the location okay if i press enter you say yes 
and you want to enter the password for the root there and you enter the password and you, oh sorry the password was wrong see that password was right now and this file is transferred now if i come back to this and if i say ls you can see that this file is now here okay if you can see this file is now there if i say cat uh, to this you can see that this is the definition which we copied from there okay that's the one if you want to uh, copy a folder to that what i'll do is uh, what i'll do is i'll create a folder here and i copy it the to the other server so mkdir and i'll say for example i give the name scp-folder see that this this folder is created i'll go into this and just create some content as well ls so i'll say for example touch thousand files i'm gonna create thousand files for example uh, or maybe hundred files will be okay a b c this is the wildcard uh, entry which I'm using here. You can see that I can create 100 files with one command. So see that all 100 files are there. What I want to do is I want to copy this uh, folder to this virtual machine. Okay. So at the moment you can see that this folder is not there. What I'm going to do is I'll uh, copy the folder. So to copy the folder SCP hyphen R, we have to use SCP hyphen R. The L and uh, no, sorry, S secure copy folder. This is what we want to move to which uh, to sorry to which uh, VM we have here 188 192.168.0.188. Okay, and where we want to copy this, we want to copy this to root. Okay, so you can see this now. We copy this, yes, and uh, need the password yes sure why not get the password and you can see that all hundred files are moved to this folder now we go here you check and you can see that this folder is now here okay if you go to this and just check the content we have that hundred files the PDF files is there so this is what the SCP is and this is how you know we can uh, use uh, the the to transfer the data across the virtual machines and uh, uh, you know across the uh, the host to the uh, local host to the remote uh, virtual machine and these kind of things okay the next one we have is the rsync command so this is also used to transfer the files on the uh, over the uh, one host to other host i took this uh, command from the wikipedia rsync is a utility for efficiently transferring and synchronizing files between a computer and the storage drives and across the network uh, computers by comparing the modification times and sizes of the files it is commonly you know found on unix like operating system okay so what it is exactly so our sync you know basically what's the difference between our sync and a secure copy or file transfer protocol so they are different so for example ftp and scp so scp is uh, have the layer of security and uh, that's why it's make it differ from ftp and then we have the rsync what's rsync you know make it different from the scp and uh, uh, from the ftp so basically rsync doesn't uh, duplicate the data so for example if i say uh, if i have one file okay uh, file a okay and i transfer it to the other host okay and then in the same folder i have file a and b b both okay and i want to transfer that folder again to the host it will not copy the file a because file a is already there okay it will only copy the file b so it doesn't duplicate the data it's also faster than the uh, scp and it's fast and you know versatile command line utility for synchronization synchronizing the files and directories you know between two locations uh, over the remote shell of course and it's also you know provide the fast incremental file uh, transfer by transferring only the differences between the source and the destination so that's why you know it's very nice usually we use it for the backups as well we have the protocols as well which i'm going to show you in next videos as well you will learn a lot actually and on this channel definitely not we will be stick to the to the linux only but we i will i will uh, you know uh, uh, launch many other uh, 
series as well which are very useful the next one just to let you know that the next one which i'm going to you uh, to launch the the series is the gitlab one the gitlab is very important series for the you know continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment it's very nice series you will enjoy that as well but for now uh, we're going to focus on uh, the linux um, series okay so how we use the rsync command okay so what i'm going to do is so you see the ls and uh, abcd we are here so just want to get out of this and i want to remove this folder quickly or m hyphen or sc so i'll delete this you can see that we don't have this folder here so you still have this folder here okay how i'm going to copy this folder over to the over to this so it's very simple and very easy here sorry actually not here here so the command is r sync we have yes we have our sync hyphen a z v h v is verbose and you know a z h it's a different option you can man to it and you can understand what it is exactly to the root at so for example at one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one eighty eight which is the ip address of this if you can see that if config and this is the ip address of this virtual machine you can see that because we want to uh, to move the file from that black terminal vm to the brown terminal vm okay or the from the web server 2 to uh, server 1 so sorry i missed one thing here what i want or sync hyphen is a vh and what we want to copy scp and uh, where we want to copy we want to copy it to the and i just want to make it a little big so that you understand this okay to the root folder of this okay i'll say yes okay so there is a problem let me see oh yes the problem is the command of course sorry there is no space so you see this now it's asking for the password and if i enter the password you can check this it transfers the data more faster than the scp protocol okay and you can go back okay check this here now ls sorry oh what happened here what did i execute sorry just give me a second just want to clear myself as well yeah that's uh, that's true and um, okay uh i'll check this what exactly the issue here Okay, so what it does basically is that it uh, copy all the files from uh, one folder, uh, from the folder from the web server one, and then it uh, web server two, sorry, and then it transfer to the uh, web server one. You can see the files there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create more files here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create more files. Go to SC, sorry, SC lab, and you can see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch again and uh, say I'll only say uh, sorry B N N for example nothing one dot uh, one thousand files more for example dot CSV files okay and it's created here you can see that we have now the folder of PDF and CSV files okay what I'm going to do is now that I'm going to and go back and execute the same command again i want to copy the same folder to the uh, server one press this i'll press h a s sorry yes and you see that this is also transferred now when we come back here we say ls and you can see that it doesn't repeat so it created the thousand files as well and then we have the pdf file hundred so you see that it doesn't copy the pdf files again we have the hundred pdf files so if i say ll static dot pdf and if i say wc hyphen l so you see that it's only hundred files there which is already there that pdf files okay which was there already so it doesn't copy that pdf files okay it just copy the the csv files which was already there and it transferred it here so that's the uh, basically what uh, the um, you, you can see that uh, how we can use it our sync protocol it doesn't duplicate the data it uh, doesn't uh, you know uh, uh, 
duplicate the data it doesn't uh, take much time it doesn't take much uh, you know uh, effort from us you know to to uh, to to transfer it to work on it it's very easy command and we can use that and uh, please have a have a look on to this i'll try to uh, give you the commands in the description as well please try to work on it try to get your hands on to it and uh, you will definitely you know um, uh, you will definitely uh, pass the exam and uh, you uh, you you will get your dream job as well to you know by following these videos and by practicing yourself and maybe search online as well i would say to consult other tutorials as well and uh, you will understand that uh, how how these things work so uh, you know again that video goes bit bit um, bit uh, more uh, uh, long so just a, a recap what we did so, you know basic networking concepts uh, re network related files some commands and tools and the very important one ftp scp and our sync protocols so please uh, you know understand this and um, let's you know uh, let's practice this as well and uh, if you have any question please leave the comment below and i will reply to you and i will get back to you thank you very much guys thanks for joining me and uh, i'll see you in the next videos thanks bye